Hello friends. So in this video, we will continue with our previous discussion. In previous discussion, we have started with microprogram control unit design. There we have seen that how to prepare a micro routine. What we need to do? We need to write for instruction. We have to write the control sequence and then based on control sequence, we need to prepare the set of micro instructions and together them we used to call as a micro routine. Four basic terms we have come across previously that is micro routine, micro instruction, control store, micro program counter. Hope you remember those. Now we'll continue our discussion. So here in control store memory, how in the control store, how we are going to store the uh, micro routines is shown. This is the layout of our control store memory, right? So this is showing how the micro instructions are arranged in a control memory. So see, whenever I'm discussing this with some assumption, we are doing it. My assumptions are that we are having only one indirect memory addressing mode. If data is in memory, then only indirect addressing mode is supported. If we want to support more, many more addressing mode, then we need to change a bit of it, right? And see, we have seen in our previous discussion that PC out, MAR in, read, select for the three controls, uh, control words will be there for all the micro routines belonging to each of the instructions present in your instruction set architecture. So instead of storing them individually for each of the instruction, what we will do, we'll store them at a common place, right? So the layout of control memory says the first cycle. First cycle means the control words for PC out, MAR in, read, select for, add, Z in, Z out, Y in, like that. Then MDR out, IR in. So those will be there at one place, right? Whenever we need to bring one instruction from memory, we will be fetching those micro instructions. Okay, before that, I need to tell you how it is going to work. By reading one control word, or micro instruction from control memory that reading is equivalent to generating the control signals whose bit values are one in your control uh, words right so uh, and by generating those signals we are going to perform one step of our instruction right so in first cycle we are having three steps so to execute those three steps we need to generate the control signals so those control signals will be generated by reading the three control words that part the part that comprises our fast cycle right so fast cycle routine will be stored only once in our control memory after fast instru instruction fetch is over then after decoding we'll go get to know that whether data is in memory or we can directly proceed with the execution so if it is in memory then we are moving to a mic uh, then we are uh, moving to a part where uh, that how to read data from memory if indirect addressing mode is there that is uh, to that particular location we need to jump and if the data is in, not in memory then directly we can jump to execute the instruction meaning is operands are part of instruction or operands are there in the registers done so fast cycle routine is done only once after the first cycle is over then we may have to go to indirect routine or execute routine so in case of indirect routine, this part will comprise the micro instructions that will bring one instruction from memory, right, in the indirect addressing mode. Once operand is brought, then now we can proceed with execution. So at the end, we are jumping to execute cycle. So in the execute cycle, what we will do, see, for various opcodes, our execution will be different. So add cycle routine, sub cycle routine like that for all the opcodes, one one routine will be there right so here we will decide based on of code where to jump so jump to of code routine based on of code we will go to one particular uh, this one routines right and and see here after each uh, this one what is that no, of code routine there is written jump to fetch or interrupt why it is so because see whenever we have completed one instruction then in generally we'll execute the next instruction in sequence right so jump to fetch or we need to execute one instruction maybe in next in sequence or maybe some jump right so jump to fetch that means basically we need to execute one instruction so to execute another instruction we need to start with the fetching of the instruction 
so once this instruction is over we have to go to fetch routine so again this three will be uh, executed and after that based on the next instruction that we have brought we may have to go to indirect routine or execute this is one point another is or interrupt see whenever you are executing one instruction that time you may get a interrupt request also right suppose you are executing one instruction at location i some instruction you are executing that time your interrupt signal is coming right interrupt signal is on so if interrupt signal is coming then then also i'll first completely execute the instruction that i'm currently executing that means this instruction will be completely executed only after executing this instruction we will go to interrupt service routine and before going to interrupt service routine you may need to do some miscellaneous task that means the way you do context switching in your operating system from one process to another process when you move then this process status is my like state you need to store somewhere then the new process status you need to bring into your registers then only you can start the new process so like that whenever you are uh, stopping this particular instruction after this instruction you are going to stop and you are going to interrupt service routine so before that something you need to store as part of this instruction sorry as part of this particular process so that part is called as jump jump to fetch or interrupt so in this interrupt cycle routine whatever miscellaneous job you need to do as part of servicing interrupt that you will do and after that you will start isr that means interrupt service routine so interrupt service routine is also a collection of instructions so basically you will be again executing this so to execute this first you need to fetch and again you need to decode execute that part will be continued so this is how the control words or the micro routines are stored in the control store right so what is they are telling see this figure shows how control words or micro instructions could be arranged in a control memory the micro instruction in each routines are to be executed sequentially one after another we will be executing them means executing means what we will read them each routine ends with a branch or jump instruction indicating where to go next that we have seen then there is a special execute cycle routine this one execute cycle whose only purpose is to signify that uh, one of the machine instruction routines like and add sub or you need to execute next depending on the current opcode based on opcode you will be going to a one particular routine once it is over you may have to execute the instruction next or interrupt has come so you need to do the job as part of interrupt uh, switching right so this part is done that control store uh, control memory layout we have seen then next is what is the format of your micro instruction though we have seen there in my previous video so this one is one particular format is given here we are not digging out the greater details of it that here your pc in pc out like that those are there we are not talking like this simply we are telling that this part will hold the signals belonging to cpu control signals that means pc in pc out the part of your cpu control signal then next is system bus control signal like your uh, that wmfc read write those are system bus control signal then jump condition so jump condition may be unconditional jump or suppose if you are implementing your conditional jump then based on the flag you are going to do a jump so that part is indicated here zero overflow whatever conditions you are going to support then indirect bit in my this uh, um, discussion we have assumed only limited number of conditions as well as only one addressing mode for data in memory you if you are including more then here more bits number you need to include that will indicate which addressing mode you are supporting then based on that you need to go to that particular routine for getting the data from memory then this part is micro instruction address the micro instruction one part is holding micro instruction address also because see you, you are telling jump to this jump to that so wherever you are jumping that is stored in this micro instruction only right so there is one bit for each internal processor control line and one bit for your system bus control line that already i have said then there is a condition field indicating the condition under which there should be a branch and there is a field whose address of the micro instruction to be executed next is also given this part then to execute this micro instruction executing is equivalent to turn on all the control lines indicated by a bit value 1 and 
leave off of all other control lines indicated by a zero value. The resulting control signals will cause one or micro operations to be performed. That means one step will be executed for a particular instruction. If the condition indicated by the condition bits is false, then execute the next instruction in sequence. If the condition indicated by the condition bits is true, next micro instruction is to be executed is indicated by the address field. That means what is the target, right? That will be indicated here. So see here, one example we have seen here, micro routine for the instruction branch less than zero. That means branch on negative, right? That means if n flag value is zero, you are not going to jump. If n flag value is uh, equal to one, we are going to perform a jump. So see, these first three micro instructions are fetching the instruction and then branch to starting address of appropriate micro routine. That means based on my opcode, I'm moving to one particular micro routine. Say my micro routine is starting at uh, location 30 in the control store. And now here what I'm doing, if n flag is zero, then what? Then we need not have to do anything. We need to fetch the next instruction. So next instruction address is also already there in PC. So simply uh, then branch to micro instruction zero. So see this micro instruction zero, this is one address of a micro instruction. It is part of your, this current micro instruction only, right? Offset, uh, see this part is one part. And if this condition is not true, that means n flag value is not zero. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to fetch these micro instructions from the control store. And fetching these control words from control store is equivalent to generating these control signals, right? So this is one micro routine for this particular instruction, right? Now I'll be explaining you the uh, block diagram for our microprogram control unit. So this block diagram says, see, starting and branch address generator will give the address to microprogram counter, right? Microprogram counter and microprogram counter will be pointing to control store. Wherever it is pointing, that particular control word will be read in a particular cycle, right? And reading one control word is equivalent to generating the signals whose bit values are coming as one and it will turn off those signals whose bit values are coming as zero, right? So this is how it is going to do. And see, most of the time, microprogram counter is incremented with the advancement in the clock. Only in few cases, it is going to divert. What are those cases? I'll explain. In those cases, what will be the value of mu PC? that will come from this particular block. And this block is supported by the content of IR when new instruction is coming or say WMFC, MFC signal conditions. If the condition N0, N, V, O, the condition codes. And sometimes the control word one part is holding what? Next micro instructions address. So that is again given, given back to starting and branch address generator. So using all these, it is going to generate the next instruction, next micro instructions address to be fetched from the control store. And that is given to mu PC. Then mu PC will read something from this control store and that thereby we are going to generate the signals. So see here to generate signal, here we are performing a memory read operation. So performing a memory read operation will make it make this control unit bit slower because after all you are going to perform a memory operation. So it is one memory read. So that part will take some time due to that microprogram control unit it, control unit is a bit slower than your hardware counterpart. And in the next video, I'll explain uh, in which conditions mu PC is loaded with new values. Otherwise, for every clock pulse, it will be incremented. So till then, thank you.